Mike is loud. She's loud and proud. Loud and dang on proud up in there. Loud and proud. Hey, uh, Nadra Foster. <laughs> How you doing today? Well, good morning. Just waiting on some more people to come on. And listening to my loud and proud two-year-old in there. I don't know what the heck um, she talking about. <laughs> but good morning. I had to leave in a minute. But uh, good morning. Today going to be talking about strongholds. Keeping you from being stable and obtaining lasting employment. Strongholds. Nobody wants a stronghold. Nobody wants a stronghold in their life, you know? Who the heck wants to have strongholds? Nobody. Sometimes people don't know they have strongholds, you know? And um, just waiting on uh, to see how many more people are going to come. And I'm going to, for just a moment, because I have to leave out of here and... Um, I have to go hours and hours away from where I am right now. So that's my roundy round behind me. They sent me a roundy round. <laughs> it doesn't cover nothing. That's it. You know, but good morning, everybody. Good morning. Are strongholds keeping you from being stable and obtaining lasting employment? That is the question of the day. Are strongholds keeping you from being stable in anything? Hey, Gail. Hey, Nat. I don't think I know you. Um, I buy Moses Barry. Hey. I don't know you, but hey. <laughs> and, um, but... Oh, yeah, and we want to shout out to my homegirl, Kina Crawford, whose album came out Friday. Her album came out Friday. She's been singing with Isaac Hayes' daughter for quite some time, so it's time for her to have her own album finally come out because she can really blow. I met her at, um, well, we I met her at church in Atlanta. That's we go to the same church in Atlanta. And, uh, yeah. So, hey, Kina, congratulations. And it reached some top numbers on the charts in one day. So, happy for me, Kina, my homie. My homie. There's some homies out there that are set in your life for different things. She's like my tragedy homie. If I have a tragedy in my life, she's like, comes like an eagle. She came like an eagle in those times in my life. <laughs> but we but we argue about other stuff. But the question of the day, like I said, are strongholds keeping you from being stable and obtaining lasting employment? <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Whitney. It took me a long time to do it this morning because I didn't want to get up. And I got to be somewhere hours away from where I stay at this corporation. And I um, got to train these people on something I created and I presented and they liked it. Um, but I am going to base this um, something off this stuff off of a scripture real quick because I got to go in a minute. And then I got a two-year-old in there talking about bum bum, and she want bum bum. I don't know what that is. She keeps saying akapuka. I don't know what that means. Uh, she keeps pointing. I look. I don't know what she wants. Hey, Bryce. But um, like I said, our strongholds keeping you from being stable. Hey, Erica Maxwell, and obtaining lasting employment. So, those of you that don't know, um, I had a, a video that I did, a, a testimony that I thought was trash in my life. And I didn't know that um, it would go viral. And it did. And it caused me to get all these letters. 
and um right now i think they told me it said 96 uh, thousand almost it's almost uh, at a hundred thousand plays and um which caused me to earn money like royalties money i'm like for real uh, really and so I, that's a blessing right there but i didn't know what would attract that many people and the attraction was the deliverance part the deliverance like how did you um how did you get um employment like you did how did this happen how did all those doors happen so really i was just talking you know but the part that was attracting the people was the power of god breaking the strongholds out of my life from family curses curses i might put on myself probably different things and i didn't really realize that that is um that it was attracting and every day it's growing by the thousands you know um for real you know so i was like dang all these people keep writing me and they've overloaded my email and you know wanting to know more about deliverance wanting to know why they are keep having rise and fall in their life why they rise and they're doing good and in a short period of time they fall they fall, they lose the job, their car is gone uh, from repossession, sickness happens, something happened right when they about to start the job, chaos comes about. So they wanted to know how to stop that. That's the, the 100 question, like that's the number one question of the day. Like I'm getting wrote all day. They come in, they come in every 30 minutes, it's a pow. And when I read some of them, I might read some i don't know <laughs> i want to embarrass people because they they say some stuff this is all over the world the united states i've gotten letters from asia nigeria um a lot of canadians all the way down uh, to south america like people wanting to know why do they go to a certain level and they thinking that they have been blessed but they feel the blessing is a curse because they get there and they fall. They get a visa or whatever it's called to come to the United States and something happens. They go to the immigration. They were they were going to be going to the United States and they go with their friend. They're going. They're going to be able to get to go to, to America. And all of a sudden, that person, something happened. They don't get to go. All the paperwork got canceled. But the friend has moved on. They gone to college in the United States or somewhere in London or somewhere so people are wanting to know uh, why do they keep having rise and fall why uh, I've had a lot of guys you know write me from my that um, video that is on my channel and uh, it has also reached PBS kids station um, you know just something that I, I was just talking you know, but they want to, I've had guys tell me they were doing good. They left their homies alone and all of a sudden they get up and go to Walmart and they go to jail. As soon as they get a real lasting, stable job that their family or people that talk about them couldn't get. And they're like, oh my God, I'm getting locked up for 90 days or I'm not even going to have the job. I'm going to have to go live back with my mama. I got locked up. That's what I get letters from guys. Like they, they're not talking about it to people. And they just, it's like, they want to know the deliverance part. Like why, how did you get out of that? How? We hear that like what you said you did, but wow, how can that apply to my life? I've also had people who are non-believers who are not even Christian want to know how in the world, how, how to break this out of my life. They, you know, people say is they feel like it's on their back everywhere they go. They feel like it's written on their hair, their head, failure, uh, to not be able to be a success and take care of their kid. Hey, Anthony and Tony. So I'm going to say a couple of scriptures real quick. And they're coming from Psalms 36. And it says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. 
Give thanks to the God of gods, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, his love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his love endures forever, and who by his understanding made the heavens. So his love endures forever. He did not ask anybody to do anything. And he is the God of God. There's no one above God, the Almighty. You know, I call him the great I am, the big he, the um, God of wisdom, uh, you know, knowledge and understanding. You know, I um, and I thank Jesus for dying on the cross for me. You know, I didn't understand all that back then. But uh, like I said in my video, it went, went viral that has caused the television station to reach me. You know, God is the only one that did it. And I had strongholds keeping me from being stable up and abstaining lasting employment. The enemy would can also uh, lead you in pathways to go to uh, types of employment or selling drugs or different things that will stumble you from really the prized possession that God really has for your life. And he will keep you going away and, and keeping he'll send the best connect. You know, I was married to someone that was like a drug lord. So I know what it means. I didn't know that life, although I was in it. And I know what it's like when I heard God say, I got the connect from the borders and whatever. And I lived near the borders of Mexico and different stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So I know I saw this and I did not know that me in that life that I didn't know I got into... <laughs> you know, as a prop, basically, um, it was a part of the stronghold to keep me from going the path that I would go and they would, you, you know, abuse my business skills and demonic things. And I say, and I was obtaining demonic favor, you know, and, um, the enemy will just twist your gifts and he will lead you down roads that you should not go. But there is a God of God that is stronger than that God. Then, then that devil, that demon, because the devil, he will send someone like he's like an angel he was, of light. He will send someone. And I get a lot of messages from guys like that. Write me not to be trying to holler or nothing, but like write about real stuff going in their lives. Gangs, um, murderers, different people that just want forgiveness. They don't want these curses on them anymore. They don't even know their curses are. Some tell me that they feel like it's a curse, that they want to be, uh, they would love to be a corporate guy you know and if you are a man and you feel like dang as a kid and on the inside you are a major business owner you, some people you can see it on them like but they are not living it they're not living it no one in their family got no money they selling drugs or stealing or working somewhere making 725 an hour or under the table you know, I was around foreigners for a long time, I, you know, until they made me feel like I was one and that I needed to be hidden in, in America. And that's the life that I was living, a hidden life. But a lot of these guys here in the U.S., they live in hidden lives, uh, you know, and, and girls and women um, in different ways, though, you know. And the enemy can take you down those dark pathways that are lit, that seem lit up. And that you met somebody and they say, oh, you need to do this with me and you need to go down. You need you need to quit all that, man. And you're trying to do something legit that takes time. Hey, Donna, Nakisha, <laughs> um, you're trying to do something legit that takes time. And if you just stay with it six months, you can see growth. You stay with it a year. You, you can see even more growth. But because you went down. The road that say that satanic pathway that seemed like the best deal, and you're making all this money. There's always holes in the, your pocket when your money comes from Satan. He's never gonna let you have increase. I don't care if you make it to TV. I don't care if you make it to the millions. If it's satanic money, a hole will always be in your pocket. A hole will forever be in your pocket if it's satanic money. Hey, Gladys and Shamika. So we don't want, 
I got here in a minute. We don't want satanic monies anymore. You know, I had to get to the point in, in my life that I didn't want satanic money no more. That I didn't want a satanic life. I, I didn't even know the word satanic. But like others who contact me, who write me from Nigeria, South America, the United States, not even in my own city, but these are people all over. They want to know what it is that's causing it. What is causing this stronghold, this, this, this grip? Soon as you rise, you fall. Soon as you feel like you are blessed with something, you fall shortly after. Hey, Latoya Lato Lato Patterson. You know, so people are, are wanting to know that part. That was the part in my video that has made it to the PBS Kid Station and that has um, went viral. You know, where the... Um, in secret, it has went viral uh, and before my own eyes. The part in it, like I said, was the deliverance. That is the part that's attracting the people. The deliverance, not the jobs and the monies that God allowed me to have, which was awesome, but it is the deliverance part. Like, oh my God, how the heck, how the heck do I get out of this net? How? You know, how do I keep my vehicle from always getting, uh, what is it, repossessed? And, I mean, I see people get a car every year. <laughs> you know, I've seen that. We've all seen that. And they think they are so blessed. Oh, girl, I got, what do you mean you're getting another car? And what do you have, like a 10-car garage? Oh, the other one got repossessed. My bad. My, my, I'm sorry, repossession. You know what I'm saying? Repossession is not a blessing, okay? If it's getting repossessed, something is wrong. And then you're going to get another one, something's wrong. It should never be repossessed. And another thing, because I have non-believers that are contacting me as well, and, um, you know, non-believers and believers, Stop blaming God all the time. Now, God does allow stuff to happen, but I notice the blame is always on God when the storms arise in your life. But never do people ever turn around and look for Satan who is standing back. Like, <laughs> keep on blaming God, man. I'm, there, I'm in this one. You know, from when people die, rapes, murders, loss of jobs, foreclosed homes, evictions that you didn't win, job loss, all kind of losses. People, you know, forget. Why are you saying, why God let that happen? Why did he let my child die? Why did this happen? And sometimes people is this their time. But I'm giving a real example who people are forgetting. Satan, he's always around, always causing trouble. His eyes stay on you because if he got the opportunity, one second opportunity, he going to kill you. And he not only going to try, going to do it, he going to stick that blade in there and he going to keep doing it and grind you in because he wants to sift you as wheat. He don't want you to have nothing. If your whole family's been poor and you in that poverty curse and you keep rising and climbing them mountains with your bare hand, trying to make it to the top and you get there and you're the only one in the family, your family, that has ever did this little thing here, ever got a job right here, and you back at the dust, you, you fall right back down. Those claws, those claws, from your generations that you're, you're on your mother and your father's side. You know, coming at you. Coming that something you ain't never even did. And your grandma from five generations ago sitting up in witchcraft. Sitting up worshiping Satan. Sitting up going to put a curse on a man from when she was 18. She didn't know that it's going to curse all her grandchildren and everybody in her family until that thing is broken. You know, so strongholds can come from a lot of different things in your life. But if you've had these rise and fall problems from when you were a kid, it is probably generally 
generational. It is probably a generational curse or someone put something on, uh, you know, cursed your life with words or uh, all kinds of different things, you know, when you were a kid. Because if you had a hard time as a kid, <coughs> there's something wrong with that. We've all had our hard times here and there. But I know what I'm talking about. Because I know what it's like to be uh, in a family. You got to look at everything. When you are trying to want to be delivered, you got to make the choice and say, I want to be delivered by any means necessary. That's how I got delivered. Not knowing that I was ma I was really making the choice by any means necessary. And sometimes after you're delivered, those old chains, those old generational curses, they want you back. They want you back. And some of us have been blessed and some of us have submitted to the curse again in little ways. And it, and it needs to be broken off again because now the situation is worse because you submitted to it, whatever it was, whatever old friend, whatever, whoever, wherever you was delivered from, you going over in that area to go say hi. And God told you not to go over there. You used to hang that 15 and you know, it wasn't no good. That block could be cursed because I've dealt with people in, in uh, like New York and California gang members. And you could tell the block was cursed with prostitution or just murders. Like people are, are highly murdered on, on that block. You know, these are the words from people that have talked to me, you know, and they don't know that they're saying like that block is cursed. That corner is a cursed corner. And here you are delivered from that area. And you bring your butt right back over there. You go right back over there. Five years later, did you listen to the voice of God? Did he tell you to go back to a cursed place? Because if he didn't, why are you over there surrounding yourself by curses? There's one thing that you say, oh, I want to go get people delivered. I want to go bring people to Christ. I want to I wanna help. Sometimes that's not your territory. He may place you in another territory to go help because deep down, see Satan, who we never blame for some stuff because every time something tragic happens, down to the storms that have arised, people always blame God for everything. They never blame that joker, that sorry bastard Satan who really is rising up against you, who's really rising up against you for real. And don't, he doesn't want you to have anything lasting. He doesn't want you to do anything. And my phone went dead. 